Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. Um, yeah, so I think that's it on that one. Uh, Amy, anything you had to add or any questions on I, th I think that some people get overwhelmed when finding influencers and something that's really important to remember when using sites like Thomason, like Andy mentioned, or um, Famebit is a really good one for YouTube. Yep. Uh, Shoutcart is a good one. There's a bunch of really great influencer websites and ways to find influencers. But remember, don't forget to do, just like you do your due diligence if you're hiring a shipping company or Absolutely. you're, you know, you're hiring anyone to work with your business, do your due diligence and make sure that go and check them out on Instagram. Go and look at their YouTube channel. Are they just posting a whole bunch of products? Are they just trying to make money and maybe all of their followers are fake followers and they're not, uh, they are not engaging followers? I, the last thing we would want you to do is spend 500 bucks hiring an influencer with 200,000 fo fake followers that doesn't get any engagement. So what you want to do is you want to look up their, um, their alias on Instagram, look them up on YouTube, look up their blog and see what kind of things that they are posting and then see what the reactions are. Do they get a bunch of likes when they post something? Are people commenting a bunch? Um, what is the engagement level? Uh, so make sure also that the things that they're posting are, would be well represented, that your brand would kind of fit into that, right? Your products would fit into that. Um, so due diligence is really important so that it pays off. Also, if they're a blogger, make sure that their writing doesn't suck <laughs> because, uh, yeah, if it may just be that, you know, they, they look at other product posts that they've done and see what their engagement levels are. And then the last tip that I have for you is don't be afraid to go after micro influencers. So if your brand is just getting started and maybe you don't have, you know, a thousand dollars to spend on influencers from different platforms, well go out there and um, start looking in Facebook groups for like, you know, mommy, mommy, Facebook groups, stuff like that. Um, the, the hunters, Facebook groups, the Reddit subreddits, all of that kind of stuff, Pinterest, um, Pinterest bloggers that have like lots of boards with lots of followers. Don't be afraid to message them and say, you know what? I would love to send you my product. I love your channel. I love your blog, you know, and see if you can develop a relationship with a micro influencer, somebody who has a lot of engagement, but not a million followers. Right. And they'd probably be very excited to have that opportunity to do that, um, and grow their own following as well. So don't be afraid to, to check that stuff out. But Andy, when should they get started with this stuff? ASAP, because it takes a while for that, that you know, ball to start rolling. So you want to start looking for people right now. And Amy, Amy you, you made some great points. Yeah, you definitely want to look at their profiles, you know, see what they're doing. Um, make sure they're not bots or, or fake and, and, and all that good stuff. Um, and there was another point that I wanted to make. But once again, I, I, I need to you're, like, I need to do a pad. Me. I need to get like a pad and a pen when I, while we're doing this so I can write it down. Um, yeah, so we're, we're going to move on to, to the next tip, which is send your best customers holiday greetings. You know, so like the, the old, you know, 80-20 rule, you know, go back through, through your order reports. Um, if you use a tool like uh, ShipStation, which I absolutely love, um, you know, you, you can actually go through and filter in, in the reports and see what like your, your top 20 customers or 100 or however you want to do it. Um, you know, siphon them off and, you know, especially if you have a new product or, or something for the holidays, send them that, you know, it, it could be a, there's uh, companies that do like automated postcards for you. Um, you know, if you have the time handwritten postcards, of course, are like 10 times better because people are like, holy crap, this company, like somebody took the time to actually write me a card. Um, you know, it might get tossed in, in the trash, but, um, you know, it, if your best customer who's going to, who generally spends, you know, a large amount of money, if even one of those convert, then, you know, that's, you know, that's time well spent. Um, so, you know, definitely think about doing that. Um, I'm trying to think of, there's some automated ones that I can suggest here. Um, I'm trying to think of the name. I think it's, um, And Andy, when you say uh, send them holiday greetings, are you talking about like greeting cards, uh, postcards? So like a, like postcards, yeah. So you want to do mail. 
Yeah, snail mail, like real. Yeah, sorry, I probably should have been more clear. Um, yeah, so so like yeah, a postcard with you know uh, some holiday like you know Christmas tree on the front or something like that, and say like, you know, hey, thanks so much for being a customer. We really appreciate your business. You know, um, you, you can, I you know, to me, a soft sale in in the postcard wouldn't be you know the worst thing. Like, hey, we've got this new. Um, you know, clip on water bottle uh, that we thought you might love. If you want to, you know, get it, here's 20% off, go to whatever. Um, and hey, I just, I just Googled holiday postcards distribution for businesses. And um, even MailChimp does this. So cool. Yep. Uh, you could I probably that, yeah. make it pretty automated. You could design something yep. cool. Yep. And, um, and then you can get somebody else to send it out for you, like cardsdirect.com, you know? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> um, cool. Harsha, uh, as far as I know, I mean, there's really, uh, there's no, you have the address. It's part of doing business from Amazon. I've never, ever heard of anyone getting in trouble for sending like hard mail uh, to customers. So, um, yeah. yeah. So Harsha's question is, is it okay to mail anything to customers? And well, I mean, you know, it, I, I think it might be weird to mail just anything, but if you're just sending them a nice card, like yeah. it's not like they're going to get mad at you and report you to Amazon. They sent me a Christmas card. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> Terrible. I don't, I, like I said, I mean, it, it, I mean, honestly, it could possibly, you know, be against TOS. I know that phone numbers you're not supposed to in emails, even though they, they, uh, you know, hide the emails. Uh, but I've never heard of anybody having any issues with, with snail mail. Um, but Andy, aren't they soon going to remove customer address data from Amazon? There's talk of it, but uh, then you just, you know, that's why you merchant fulfill. <laughs> the, yes. You have some merchant fulfilled stuff so that you can still get some of that data. Okay. Cool. All right. The next thing is bundle and target holiday shoppers. So, um, you know, what you want to do is if you have a non-holiday product, um, you know, for example, let's see here. Um, Amy was talking about like, a, a pen earlier, you know, maybe like a pen with like a, you know, a note. A, 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 that's a, what I did with my cat toys, Andy. There you Remember? go. Like a, I had those yeah. terrible cat toys that I could not sell. I launched them and they must have been featured on Jungle Scout because there was a million other people that launched them at the same yeah. time. And y'all, I could not sell these stupid cat toys. So what did I do? I went on DHgate. I ordered a bunch of Christmas stockings. I put a cat design on them. I stuffed the cat toys in there. I shipped them off to Amazon and I sold a hundred units and I was mad because I sold a hundred units by the end of October, beginning of November. And I was mad that I didn't send more in. <laughs> yep. So that's a great example of how you can bundle your product with a holiday product and sell it like mad cat toys. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, even if you have something like stale, that's just sitting in your warehouse that you haven't sold. If there's any way that you can bundle that, uh, and, and make it for the holidays, then, you know, it's worth a try. Uh, like Amy said, I mean, you know, send, you know, 50 to start and see if they start burning through there, then you're like, Oh, okay, this could work. And then, you know, make sure you get it back online again. Uh, like Amy said though, if you, if you don't plan, you know, if you don't plan that out well enough, you could, you could stock out, which is not the end of the world. When you really think about it, if you blow through a bunch of product and you're out of stock, yeah, it sucks. You wish you had more, but on the flip side, like you sold it like fantastic. Good stuff. I was mad because I wasn't out of stock. I still had two cases of cat toys. Oh, I thought you were. I thought you, you oh, you didn't no, have any more. I was more, mad that I didn't more send more in. Yes. Uh, gotcha. I was like, there's no way that I'm going to sell a hundred of these things, but I'm just going to send them in and try. Right, right. And, and I actually got mad at my husband because he sent all of them in, in October. And I was like, there's no way that all of them are going to sell. And that was before <laughs> I knew the stock rule, right? That, in order to distribute them, you need to send enough in. Yep. And by the almost the first week in November, they all sold out. I was so mad. Yep. And then I didn't have time to get more, right? <laughs> yep. So, and one thing, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, Amy. And another thing to do, which, uh, you know, you, you, you see a ton of debate on this, but during the holiday season, I say absolutely continue to raise your prices if you're going to stock out because it's a holiday keyword or it's a holiday. If it's a holiday product, like you're, it's not like you're going to, you know, get more in January and try to sell it in January if it's, if it's a holiday themed product. So if you're selling through them like crazy, continue to raise that, those prices, um, you know, until the, the peak of, of the shopping season, which is usually around like December 16th around there, right around there, right around my birthday. Yeah. Yeah which is always cold. And I always complain to Molly. I'm like, yeah, it's like the busiest time of year and cold outside. That's when my birthday is like fantastic. 
She's like, well, just do it in July. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't work. Anyway, okay. So anything else on bundling, Amy? No, I, I just think, we I think it. it's so much fun to get creative. And I think people are always afraid of seasonal stuff. And this is when I say, Q4 is when I say, don't be afraid, go for it. Because yep. people have crazy Christmas spirit and they will buy the crap out of that stuff. Yep, absolutely. All right, guys. So the next tip I'm going to give you is something that we kind of, you know, had to figure out kind of trial by fire because we kept stocking out during Q4. And that's when we realized like, okay, what we need to do is we need to, um, you know, send enough to Amazon that we think we're going to sell through, but also have a backup stock, you know, like maybe 10% of what we, you know, what we think uh, we're going to need. And then we sit, we, we, we sit that stock in our warehouse and we merchant fulfill it. So there's a few reasons to do that. One is generally merchant fulfilled is higher margins. It depends on your shipping setup though. You know, if you're sending really heavy stuff, um, it might not be better. You have to do the math on that. But if you, if your merchant fulfilled stuff gives you better margins, then you of course want to do some merchant fulfilled stuff. The other great thing about doing merchant fulfilled and seller fulfilled prime is that, um, you have a backup stock, you know, you have, if, if all of a sudden, so, you know, somebody comes on and, and we've had this happen before orders like a hundred, 200, five, you know, just an insane amount. And all of a sudden you're like, Holy crap, we didn't expect that. You now have, you know, you keep, you know, say you have, you know, 200 sitting in your warehouse, then you send out a hundred to Amazon, but that listing stays alive because now you're merchant fulfilling that other hundred while that the first hundred that you sent is going to Amazon. By the time that works out, it hits Amazon, it gets checked back into FBA. As soon as you run out in your warehouse, then the FBA takes back over. Um, so that that's something that you guys really uh, want to think about doing and what, what we do every year because it really makes a huge difference in sales velocity. If you stock out in Q4, even if it's for a few weeks, it's going to really, really, really hurt you. Uh, your sales velocity is just going to drop and, and, and then you're going to, your competitors will just crush you because people like me have backup stock. <laughs> yes. And you can sell our fulfilled prime too through yep. ship station, right? Absolutely. Um, you can. Yep. Getting it out there, getting it done. I like it. I like it a lot. Yep. So, okay. Merge and fulfill where you can make sure you have enough stock. Um, be aware that, uh, you know, if you're not doing all of these other things that we talked about, and getting your PPC spun up now and all of that, and you send too much stock into Amazon, then you may end up paying really, really high storage fees because they're assessed every 30 days. So that's why we wanna give you guys these tips so that you're getting on top of this and you are crushing it, right? Yep. So that you yep. are selling out and then you got backup supply and you're ready to go and you're starting that now. So look at, how do we, Andy, make sure that we have enough stock? Okay, so one of the things that we do is uh, we go in and we look at last year's data. If you if it's a product that you know you've had for for a, you know a previous Q4, then that data is invaluable. Uh, go back through there. Generally, at a minimum, we up that the amount that we sold last year by twenty percent, and there's a few reasons for that. Number one, Amazon usually uh, every year grows by like twenty percent. Um, you can go in and Google, we just did this. I can't remember what the numbers were last year, but I think it was close to 20%. Um, so when we're, when we're planning for our, our holiday numbers, we go back and we, we search and see like in 2018, you know, what was Amazon's growth year over year. Um, and then we add that to our stock. So, you know, it's, if it's 20%, then we add that to our, our stock numbers. But we also pad that a little bit as well, because what we've noticed is um, I think, you know, so Amazon, you know, of course has all these different algorithms for ranking, but what we've noticed is I think there's a special algorithm for Q4 or some kind of like uh, rank memory, because as we get closer to Q4, our products in the, in previous years that have done well automatically start climbing up the charts. It's really, really interesting. Um, so uh, because of that, and not only that, but because we've gotten really, really good at targeting holiday keywords and getting on page one for like some of the best stuff, we know that we're just going to kill it because we know that 20%, you know, at least we're, our sales are going to be up at least 20%. Um, you know, so we, so we add that in. So that's a really good way to look at previous year's data and, and um, you know, engage from that. Now, that being said, if your product has continued 
continuously grown, you know, from the previous year. So in other words, like, you know, say in Q4 last year, you sold 500 widgets. Um, but, uh, you know, Q1 of, of 2019, you sold 700. You've, you've already seen a growth over Q4. So you want to take the highest number um, that, you, that you've gotten to um, after that point. You know, in other words, you don't ever want to use Q4 if those numbers were, you know, less than, you know, your better selling points further in the future. Did that make sense, Amy? Did I explain that correctly? Yes, but Kevin brings up a good point. Yep. Make sure you keep an eye on your competition. So if you have a product that is not seasonal, right? It's not, you know, your, your Christmas stockings or something yep. like that. It's just a regular product that happens to sell a little bit more during Q4, but your competition has really increased and yep. your overall sales have slowed down and you go back and you look at 2018 and you go, well, I sold so much. And well, then you do want to take that into consideration. So if yeah. your overall sales are down by 20%, right? Or 50% because of that, yep. you will want to take that into consideration during the next season um, when you're restocking. Um, yep. And then also that goes along with, you know, thinking about new trends, thinking about, you know, introducing new products. Maybe you want to make sure that you're, you're the leader, right? In that department. So if that, if that particular product has started to get a lot of lookalike competition, it's been featured on Jungle Scout, right? Yep. Uh, then what you want to do is make sure that you're the first to market with the new hotness, right? So maybe you start your Q4 off with a new version of that product. That's the new model. And all the copycats who are going to come in are going to be like, mm, sorry, we're not. Uh, so you want to stay ahead of them. And yeah, as Kevin says, it's a balancing act and in art yep. and he'd love to have jungle scout notifications before his products are featured. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? And then so, Anna says, Hey, um, should I send, can I send some by air and some by boat? And I said, uh, you gotta be really careful. You should have all of your stock in. If you're doing FBA, you should have all your stock in by the end of October, because if you send an LTL shipment, um, to Amazon or any kind of truckload shipment to Amazon in the middle of Q4, it will take several weeks to get checked in because it goes to the back of the line. The only way you can get around that is if you send in individual boxes because those go to the front of the line and there's so many people sending in individual boxes that their stuff gets checked in and you will stock out. As Andy mentioned, you want to use that merchant fulfilled trick to fulfill in, in the midst of your next stuff getting checked in. Yeah. And, and the other uh, thing, um, like you said, Kevin, uh, gr uh, bought, brought up a great point. The other uh, cool tool to use is, is Keepa, of course, because what you can do is go back and look. So like, that's the other thing we did. We said, okay, where was our rank, you know, in, uh, in September of 2018 compared to this year? Because that also kind of will kind of give you a good gauge on, like you said, Amy, if, you know, if you're losing traction or gaining traction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this year we were gaining traction. So to me, that was another signal that says you, you should probably order more rather than less. Um, because you know, that's, that's velocity going into, um, into Q4. So yeah, all those, all those, um, tips are going to give you guys a lot of, uh, of help. All right. Uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is running lightning deals and seven day deals. A lot of people are afraid to do those because they're like, Oh my God, it's $150. So just to give you guys context, like there's been some lightning deals, um, you know, not, you know, during some of the, the, you know, some of the big events like prime day where we've on a single product sold $50,000 in one day. Um, you know, there's been times where in Q4 where we have a lightning deal that's not like black Friday or not cyber Monday or something like that, um, that, that have also sold like an insane amount. So um, the other thing that you, you want to realize that a lot of people always try to get those like cyber Monday deals and like, you know, the, the, uh, black Friday deals. But what you want to think about is that if you do some earlier lightning deals, you know, in like, in, in like, uh, October, um, you're actually going to get some rank boost, which is going to carry your organic, organic rank into November. So don't be afraid to start running lightning deals, you know, a little bit earlier than you might normally, because that's going to get you some, you know, some, some really good rank and, 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 uh, you know, uh, keyword rank earlier on than probably your competitors are thinking about. Yes. And to see if you're eligible for lightning deals, you can go underneath your advertising menu in seller central and you can go to like crime exclusive deals. 
Um, and I believe there is a lightning. I There's think it's lightning kind of. Yeah, Lightning and Seven Day Deals is the other one that they just ran out. Yeah, um, but I think that they recently changed the menu option to yep, say it's like advertising and then deals. It just says deals. Oh, is the okay, menu. cool. Yep. Yeah, and then you'll see the different types of deals that your products are potentially yep. um, open for. Yep. And so you want to start looking at those windows now because um, you will see some of your products will be eligible in December or on Black Friday for certain deals. So you want to sign up for that now and you'll have a short window to accept that deal from Amazon. Yeah. I, I got super lucky and got, I have a seven day deal that's running on black Friday week. So I'm pretty excited about that. One. What? I got to go in and check mine. Because <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. Check it ASAP because what people don't realize is there's only so many slots check available. Right so if you don't go in and check it, um, then other people are going to yeah. snag those. Um, you know, it's first come first serve. They don't really give, I mean, they do have preference for like, you know, if you have account managers and things like that, um, you know, sometimes the, you know, people will slide in, but you know, generally if you get in early that you, you have a much better chance of getting featured on some of those lightning deals. So make sure you do that. All right. Uh, the next one is, uh, build an email list and then send them non salesy copy. And, you know, it's kind of similar to that, that postcard. Um, you know, if you have an email list, you know, just like, Hey, happy holidays, make it like a newsletter form. Um, you know, and maybe at the end be like, Hey, and by the way, if you want to check out, you know, we've got this new product uh, for, for the holidays this year, like it does this, this, and this click here. If you want to check it out. In other words, like make it 90% content, 10% sales, you know, like really, really try to make it a, a value, um, to, to that person. Um, another great thing is you can do top 10 lists to emails, uh, you know, as an email, uh, as well. It doesn't have to be a blog post. You can send your own top 10 list. Like, Hey, here's like our top 10 list. Here's the, you know, and just, um, you know, fee I, we do this and we even feature other people's products because if it's, uh, you know, something that you know, say we're doing a, a, a top 10 list for, um, you know, musicians or something like that, you know, feature other people's, you know, maybe you sell guitars, feature a gu guitar pick or, you know, like stuff that complements your products, um, make it non-salesy. And then people are much more likely to, to click through and convert. I just checked and my, one of my products is eligible for a lightning deal during Black Friday week and um, Cyber Monday week. Booyah. Yes. Yes. Love it. Love check it. it. <laughs> All right, so we, we said top 10, but we, we came up with 11. So this is gonna be the bonus tip, <laughs> which um, uh, if you caught our episode on press releases with Norm, uh, you, you'll kind of have an idea of how these work. If not, go back and, and, um, and listen to it. But uh, send out press releases. Um, you know, reporters are really hungry for holiday stories. If you can do a press release that features uh, one of your customers that talks about how it, you know, if you have, you know, maybe you, you have a health product, like how it changed their lives or, you know, some kind of testimonial or like create some kind of story around it, you know, craft it in a way, once again, that's non-salesy and, and fun to read and you'll probably get better results. Um, you know, you could also do like, uh, you know, m maybe do your, uh, it, it was the night before Christmas, uh, you know, take like a classic uh, Christmas tale and, and like rewrite it and like for your brand or, you know, come up with something really creative like that and, and then send it out. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, reporters might, might pick it up. Uh, you know, if you want to, you know, have a better chance than, you know, hiring a company like Norm's might, might be the way to go. Uh, but there's also lots of press release uh, services and uh, what is it? Haro, Amy, isn't that um, help a reporter yeah, help out? Yeah, help a reporter out. Yeah. yeah. Like, so there's lots of resources where you can kind of reach out to people and, and, you know, if you have a cool story, um, you know, they will, um, you know, they, they might feature it. And if you get, you know, into a major publication with your holiday product, like you could stock out in October, like I said, which, which once again, you know, might not be the worst thing in the world. I would love to stock out, you know, if my, if our product that sells like a kajillion sell, you know, stocked out right now, we'd scramble, but we'd be stoked because we, you know, all of a sudden now be able to go back to our supplier, reorder a ton more and get them, you know, into stock ASAP. So, um, you know, if you, if you look at the, the math, you know, if you have to, you know, send stuff by air, uh, you know, uh, at a really expensive price point last minute, if the, if the numbers work out, why not? You know, so just, uh, you know, something to think about on the, uh, on the press release side, just get that, that little extra boost that, uh, that might push you over the edge in terms of, uh, traction. Yes. Oh, all right. I felt like I talked a lot today, Amy. 
<laughs> well, I think all of those things were really great tips. It's a lot of information. We totally get it. Yep. Pick some of those tips just for you to focus on. And, um, and just to round them up again, optimize your listing, make sure you spin up your PPC campaigns. Now run mini launches for all of your top products, use influencers, top 10 lists, send holiday greetings to your best customers bundle, find some cool ways to sell your product in a new way during the holidays. And don't forget to not run out of stock by using Merchant Fulfilled. Look at last year's data to gauge stock and demand. Make sure that you get some data so that you, you don't run out of stock. Take advantage of deals underneath the advertising menu on in Seller Central. And um, make sure you do some, you know, Christmas, Christmassy greetings. And uh, don't forget about press releases because those are great. I love That's the it. rundown. Thank you, Amy. That 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 uh, gives gives everybody a uh, uh, you know a reminder of what we covered. Now, um, uh, something else uh, you know that you guys want to think about is you know, like Amy said, this is a lot of information. If you need to, just pick uh, you know a couple of these things. What you don't what you what you don't want to do is just be like, oh my god, this is overwhelming, and throw your hands up and go watch Netflix. You know, you don't want to do that. <laughs> you want to you know, really dig in here and, and pick a few things, even if it's not all of these things, pick some, you know, so, some, some things to work on. Um, because if you, uh, you know, what, what you need to look at, um, is, you know, time invested, you know, output to input, you know, you're in Q4, you're putting, you're doing minimum output compared to what you're getting back. You know, you're, you're getting so much back if you're doing, uh, you know, doing it right that, you know, your time is going to be rewarded. So this is when and you guys really want to buckle down. And think about really like something that might be kind of fun to do is look at some of your competitors that did really well last year and go and stalk them a little bit, go out on their Facebook pages, see what kind of, you know, information that they put out, scroll through their feed, see what stuff they were doing in October. Subscribe it, to their and, email list. Yes. See what kind of emails they're sending out, all that kind of stuff. And then pick some of your favorite brands that, you know, and go back into your old emails and those deals that you took advantage of, what did the sales copy say? And that email that you opened and were like, oh man, you know, that's awesome. And yeah. how can you replicate that with your own customers? Just and don't stalk my brand or my products or Amy's or <laughs> you cannot stalk either one of us. What we do is secret. No, we, we tell you everything we do. Yes. We're an open book, but yep. definitely pick some of your favorite brands and, you know, even think, learn from the top brands that are out there. Think about what brands like Coca-Cola do at Christmas, you know, and uh, don't be afraid to dabble a little bit, you know, have some fun and have some aspects of your own brand that are really shining during the holiday time and think about new ways to connect with your customers. Um, and, you know, look at another brand and see what they're doing and um, see how you can apply some of those really awesome techniques in your own brand. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, this was fun. Uh, we have to do more, more, uh, top five, top 10 type episodes, Amy. I, I think, uh, this is providing like maximum value in, in a very short amount of time. So, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Let us know, um, you know, uh, you know, via social media or, uh, you know, or on the, uh, podcast itself, when you leave a review, let us know, you know, what you're liking, what you're not liking. Um, once again, we really, really appreciate you guys. If you subscribe, uh, rate and review, um, we ask you because if we don't, you won't do it. So <laughs> thank you so much in advance for, for doing that. Um, the other thing is I want to mention, if you guys aren't part of uh, Amy's Facebook group or my Facebook group, please join up. We give you guys, uh, you know, we answer tons of questions. We give you guys free advice. We kind of post, you know, tips. Uh, we do other live videos. We do all kinds of stuff. So um, Amy's is amazing at home. Mine is Amazon FBA Titans. Um, there's another group that has stolen the name, uh, but just look for my ugly mug on the uh, header of the group and you will know that that is the right place. And, uh, so yeah, we hope you guys join that, you know, join those groups and, uh, and so we can interact with you guys a little bit more, help you along your journey. And, uh, as usual, we record this Tuesday, 1 PM Pacific time, sellerseo.com forward slash SRT for the link. And, uh, yeah, we hope we, you guys join us live. Uh, we always do the little bonus round after when we stop recording. So it doesn't go to the podcast. You can only get it if you attend live.
live. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, sellerseo.com and amazingathome.com.